the West Bridgewater School Committee, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence. Um, I'd like to include uh, remembrance for all those we lost on 9-11. Thank you. The listing of matters on tonight's agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at this meeting. Not all items listed may be in fact discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being shown live on cable and is being live streamed on the West Bridgewater Community Access Media website, wb-cam.org. A recording of this meeting will also be made available on the wb-cam.org website. Um, first up is the approval of minutes from the August 21st meeting. I'd like to make a motion to approve the August 21st meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, next up is personnel. All right, so it's a night where, really great night where we introduce our new staff to West Bridgewater and our administrators will call each one of them up. Those who can't attend tonight will be here at the October 2nd meeting. High school. Um, I this is my fourth year as a BCBA. I have worked in schools, private companies, and a hospital setting on a special needs unit. Um, I am excited to bring all of my experience working from those settings with you. And I have worked with kids ages um, two to 18 years old. So I have a vast set of knowledge and skills, um, which I look forward to sharing with you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, some of our new staff. Jack Siegel, the TV production uh, teacher, was unable to be with us this evening, but everybody else is here, so um, I look forward to you uh, getting to know them a little bit. Uh, first up, Christina Brennan, Science High School. Come on up, Christina. You're not getting out of it. <laughs> nice try, though. That was good. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm coming from South Shore Votech. I was over there for about three years. Um, but now I'm going to teach uh, physics here, engineering and robotics. Um, looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity. Um, yeah, get a, it's great. I'm already loving it. <laughs> Christina's doing a great job already trying to organize a robotics club for high school students. So we're super excited about that. Um, next up, we have Carol Stahl, our English language learner um, teacher. Come on up, Carol. What a pleasure to be part of this middle school, high school. I have had a wonderful two weeks. The staff here is amazing, and the children, teenagers, young adults, <laughs> are great, um, too. I look forward to working with our ELL students and uh, help them, helping them navigate um, the many obstacles. And um, I'm just grateful that I have this opportunity. Thank you, Carol. Um, next uh, coming up is Jackie Davis, who is an addition replacing our adjustment counselor. So she's working in our guidance suite. Hi, everybody. So I'm also really excited to be here. I left Barnesville where I had an hour plus commute. So this is wonderful. I, I, I live in Raynham. And I just want to say that everybody has been so supportive and so nice. Like the guy and staff, the teachers, Scott, my mentor, <laughs> um, Christine, have been so nice and supportive. And the kids that I've met are wonderful. And I, they're so polite. <laughs> like, 
this is such a polite student body. Please, thank you. Um, it's it's been great so far. So I'm I'm super excited. It's nice because uh, we always say we have awesome kids, so it's good yeah. to see in short time. You already know that. Um, next, we have Erin Massa, who is uh, has come on to our fine arts department and teaches art one and two. Hi, I'm Erin Massa. I am in the middle school and high school art department. I'm teaching all the middle school classes and the intro classes in the high school. Um, before I came here, I took a couple years off to be a stay-at-home parent, but she went off to kindergarten last week and is loving it, and I am also loving it here at East Bridgewater. Um, all the kids are... Oh, sorry. West Bridgewater. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, before I was a parent, a stay-at-home parent, I was um, at Pembroke High School and then a private school up in Quincy before that. Um, but as everybody else who's new here, really excited for all the classes here. Students are awesome. They seem really excited for the new creative project. So thank you, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> it's OK. Don't worry. Um, and, and it's been great. Erin's already brought some great new fresh ideas um, to us in summer class and projects, so we're super excited about that. Um, Jack could not be here with us, and a familiar face to all of you, um, Emma Preston, um, I'll let her speak, but uh, has come back to join our team as an instructional assistant. All righty. Hi, everyone. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my name's Emma, as some of you know. I definitely recognize last names. Donna, I'm pretty sure I went to school with your boys. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to be back as the eighth grade instructional IA, or instructional aide in the SPED department. I've got such great connections with the kids already, so I'm pretty excited about it. But yes, I'm excited to be back. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Uh, it's great to say that the new staff members or staff members who have changed positions are off to a phenomenal start and their commitment is really on display daily, so it's been excellent. To start us off is our new music teacher, Andrew Helwig. Come on up. Come on up. Sure and sweet, you're good. I was also not prepared for this. Um, so yes, my name is Andrew Helwig. Um, I recently graduated the Laundry School of Music up in Cambridge, Massachusetts with my master's. So I'm very excited to be here. It's been a warm welcome, having a great mentor in Amy Winter. And yeah, I'm teaching K through six general music and so far, awesome, kids are great. So thank you for having me. Next up, not new, but a new, new position for her, Ms. Amy Winter. Hello, um, I am Amy Winter. I have, um, I accepted the position as a health and wellness teacher after really kind of, I mean, I didn't think much was going to change my course. I've loved being a fourth grade teacher in West Bridgewater. I've had many of your children and you've all, um, many of you have endured a morning meeting at curriculum night. So that's sort of that connection piece and um, that social emotional piece has kind of always been embedded in my practice as a teacher. So I'm really excited to work with a wider range of students from K through six and meeting younger siblings, um, working alongside some former students is this is my first year with Kathy Marble's daughter, like we're, she'll, she'll be in the school and it's Miss Sharkey is a newer face. And so I, I guess I've been here for a long time and I'm excited to try something new and um, bring along a just a reminder of how how our kids can be their best selves. Thanks. Okay, next up is one of our new grade five teachers, Ms. Krishna Torres. Hi, so I'm Krishna Torres. I just graduated from Bridgewater State University as a class of 2023. I did my student teaching in New Bedford with both third and fifth grade. And right now I am one of the fifth grade teachers at Howard. The first few weeks have been phenomenal. These kids are amazing. The staff is so supportive and I just can't wait to continue the school year here. Thank you. And another one of our new grade five teachers, Ms. Kate Duffy. 
Hello, my name is Kate Duffy. So I um, actually got my undergrad and graduate degree at the University of New Hampshire. And so I got my master's in elementary education and I student taught for a full year in fifth grade at Deerfield Community School. And then I spent last year um, as a teaching assistant in Spain. So I helped the kids learn English, um, but I'm super excited to finally have my own classroom, my own kiddos. And I've been having a great year so far, like everyone's been saying, um, our staff is super supportive and I love all the kids there. So I'm really excited for the year to come. Thank you. So it seems like most of the staff with the McDonald and the Spring Street had a conflict tonight between graduate classes, trainings, and throwing a couple sick kiddos. Um, they will be here in the October meeting. However, we do have Nicole McMahon, who's joining us at Spring Street as a preschool instructional assistant. Hi everyone. Um, so my past, I've been a preschool teacher for, I don't want to say how many years, but <laughs> over 20. Um, I do want to share that I have two daughters and they both graduated from West Bridgewater Public Schools. And so I'm really proud to work for the school. It's very exciting. They, so my oldest daughter just graduated um, from Endicott uh, is a nurse. And one of the things she said to me is that West Bridgewater Public Schools really prepared her for college. And I really wanted to share that. And my second daughter, um, she just started at BSU. And she went through the special ed de department, um, the teachers, and they're amazing. I, qu I could never say enough about the special ed department and the teachers. I they know. helped her. They helped her. <laughs> what did you say? She didn't tell you, you were one of the teachers <laughs> right here, Kathy Marble. Um, and the, I, I just can't express enough what a great school system this is. So all of you, that's it. Thank you. Well, I guess we planned that perfectly for the end with that. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> Thank well, you we'll all. Get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Their eyes would have told you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. She's excited. Oh no. <laughs> We are back. Um, now we'll move on to the superintendent's update. Mr. Bartwell. All right. Uh, we're going to have each of the administrators talk a little bit about the opening of school. But lots of thank yous at the beginning of the year. Thank you to our administrative staff for all their hard work over the summer with hiring. Uh, the office staff continue to do a wonderful job getting us ready to start the school year. Uh, a lot of our educators came in over the summer and worked hard. They were part of interviews, but also setting up their rooms. We also did some training for the elementary teachers over the summer for the touch panels, so they took advantage of that. Uh, the best part of the job is seeing the kids come back, uh, walking back through the doors, whether it's the orientation programs or just the first day of one to 12, and then our pre-K and K kids coming back a few days later. Uh, thank you to the families. We've had a, you know, a little bit tough opening with the heat. Uh, it was a little bit tough, but uh, we got through it, and. We'll be wishing for those days, I think, pretty soon when we get the cold. And uh, I know the first couple of days when I would drive in, uh, a couple of days I came in and I saw the Howard School traffic. I've seen the high school traffic. It does also subside. So I think that's something that 
happens every single year when people learn the new routines. Same thing with buses and so forth. Um, we just ask for patience as we work through the kinks and try to figure things out. Uh, West Bridgewater Police Department opening week was very visible and they continue to be visible. SRO Pope does an outstanding job. Uh, food service uh, has done a great job as always getting food ready for our kids and during the heat getting water available to everyone and our maintenance and custodial staff. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and, and this school in particular is very busy over the summer. So they've got to work around all of that. So um, they deserve a lot of credit for all their hard work and making the buildings look uh, very good every single year, whether they're the oldest buildings or this newer building, uh, a lot of work goes into maintaining them over the years. So everyone worked together and did an outstanding job. And now if we want to have the principals come up and talk a little bit about opening and curriculum nights. is coming over um, have settled in nicely um, they already seem like they've been here <laughs> forever you know uh, they're doing a great job um, it's exciting we went back to almost like a team method in grade seven and grade eight so they're all um, you know have the same five teachers um, aside from the exploratory so I think that's going to be a great thing for those students um, we've invited a lot of new students into the building whether they've moved in or through choice um, so it's great meeting all those new faces Mr. Hannah and myself will be meeting with all the seventh grade during power blocks we break up into small groups just sit down to our power block and to chat um, and also all the new 8 through 12 students that come to the building will be having lunch with them just to see we, we love to give them a few weeks and then kind of ask is there something being new to the building that we could have done um, to help the transition and things like that so it's a good time for us to kind of get to know them a little bit better um, we've had yeah I, I mean we were lucky that this building was kind of nice temperature wise last week um, unlike the elementary sorry um, so it's been great uh, today many of our students we did a moment of silence you know for 9-11 um, to always remember that and some students and classes did walk over to the memorial that the you know the fire department takes the time to do so it was good for our kids to see that and some of the teachers and yeah I think it's it's been a good start it, the, it, the, it's exciting in the in the building um, everyone's seems very positive so it's been it's it's been great um, that could be due to the long summer um, it, you know which was also great um, curriculum night I think um, was we had you know it's, it's funny because this building is so big that sometimes you don't realize how many people are actually in it um, so as we were coming through the halls you're like wow I wonder if there's you know how many are really here but then when at the end there were a lot of parents coming out so it was good I think think middle school always represents well um, and we actually had quite a few high school parents which is good because it was a great opportunity to meet the teachers learn about the curriculum the assessments and have a little you know face to a name um, and just feel comfortable about where your kids are during the school day so I think all positives so far which is good thank you Good evening again. Yeah, I could start off by just giving a shout out to the students and the staff and the families for really continuing to do their normal school day during the heat last week because it was pretty extraordinary. Um, in the building, we're off to an excellent start. Uh, this is my third year here, so for me it seems like it's just getting better with the students, the families, and the community, and as a team. Um, fourth grade has been really fun getting to know, uh, seeing the fifth and sixth graders, they've grown up so much, even seeing some of the seventh graders come back, it's really nice to just stay in tune and in touch with all of them. Um, grade level wise, we held uh, assemblies at each lunch so we could get to know each other better, we could explicitly go over what's going to happen throughout the school year daily so we could all know mysteries. Um, and really trying to come up with a little bit of different language this year so the students at Howard know what the vision of the graduate is when they get to Miss Page at the middle school, high school. So we want to continue to push that alignment um, and so on. So it's been really, really awesome. Our curriculum night is this Thursday. It's 5 to 7. It's been pretty much communicated on all our platforms. Our real goal for the curriculum night is to do our best with explaining the difference between our new standard based grading compared to traditional traditional grading along with answering you know any other type of question that we can that's appropriate for curriculum night thanks
So starting with McDonald's school, it was a really smooth start. It was even to the point where after the first day, everyone kind of looked at each other and said, where, where's the other shoe? Like what, <laughs> considering we opened up with 326 students this year. It's big and you can feel it. But you know, it was nothing better than to see those faces come back in, especially the ones we know, you know, especially the first graders that are now second graders, and second graders are, are now the big third graders. And you really see that uh, progression and how, you know, the third graders are really setting the standard for the school. Um, this year, I'm excited to reinstitute birthdays with the principal. Um, we had taken a break because of COVID for a couple of years. It's a great way for myself to get to know the kiddos. I know I think I've had pretty much all of your kiddos at some point. Um, to get to know them on a personal level. Uh, our curriculum night is next Thursday. We're holding two sessions so that if parents have multiple students, they'll be able to get to all the classrooms. And then spring... The principal is a big deal. I hope so. <laughs> it's exciting. Um, spring Street School, this is, you know, they started last week. And again, the excitement on the first day is just, you can't bottle that up. Saw a lot of parents turning away with tears in their eyes and you know, you can remember those things. But again, happy to be there. It's so great to see the teachers outside greeting the students and doing their little, Mrs. Ellis up a little you know, photo op for parents and families to take those pictures on the first day. So it was great. Everyone's settling into routines. Um, and I really think it's gonna be a fantastic school year. Our curriculum night at Spring Street is October 12th. 12th, it's a Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, I just, you know, the administrator has done a lot of the job, teaching has done a lot of the job, and I just encourage parents to get uncertain. Like, to reach out to them, let them know what they are. We'd much rather deal with any concerns they have right away rather than waiting. It's always very disappointing when a parent starts a conversation and say, well, it's been going on for a while, but we want to talk about things right away uh, to give each kid their best experience possible. Um, and like some of the other administrators, I'm also going to be doing a lunch with the superintendent, with our kindergartners. I did it when I was at the Howard School and with new students at the Middle Senior High School. So I am super excited. I think my first uh, group is coming in on uh, Friday. So that should be a lot of fun. It's always so awesome to hear what they have to say and you know, the, the good time. Um, just some information about our district and school newsletters. Uh, the principal sent theirs home the first week of school. So they'll be sending them home on the first Friday of each month. And uh, we'll be sending the district newsletter home the third Friday of the month, which will be this Friday. Uh, and as needed, emails and postings on the website and social media posts will go out. So a bit that's always been happening, but we'll continue to do that mix of newsletters and also just getting information out. Um, we want people to feel informed and know what's going on. And we think that is you know, very, very important that parents in the community know what's going on within the schools. Next is uh, MSBA update. So just some upcoming meetings uh, pertaining to the MSBA elementary school building project. Tomorrow night, the school building committee will meet at 6 p.m. We've had we uh, three official meetings so far. This will be our fourth meeting. Uh, next Monday night in the auditorium, we'll have our feasibility study and schematic design overview, public information night. I'll be posting information out about that and talking about that a little bit more in a minute. But that's the opportunity for people to gather information uh, about what's going to happen or what vote will occur at the town special town meeting on uh, Monday, October 16th. So... Um, we hope people will come out. We are going to videotape it. It will be broadcast and so forth. Um, it's always our goal is to communicate as much information so there's no questions that aren't answered. And if people have questions after the fact, please, by all means, they can reach out to myself or any of the school building committee members. Um, you know, we've talked about this, but I think it's important to continue to share um, you know, our priority areas here are listed for the project. The first one has to do with one of our most significant problems. I heard Mrs. Goulet say 326 kids. That's because we've got five sections in each of the grades at the Roselle McDonald. Currently at the Howard, we have the fifth grade with five and fourth and sixth have four, but we are quickly approaching the need for five in those as well. So overcrowding is uh, becoming a, a major concern of ours. Uh, the second priority area is the replacement, renovation, or modernization of the school facilities. 
Um, we've got buildings that were built in the, the mid-50s and the mid-60s that we're discussing. So that's very important. And the other priority is replacement or addition of obsolete buildings um, to, to give them a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. So I've always said this before. It's like you, you go to Fenway Park and you say, well, Fenway's great. And then you go to a modern ballpark and you say, let's get rid of Fenway and build <laughs> something new. Um, the teachers, the administrators do an outstanding job in the buildings we've had. Our maintenance staff and custodial staff do a great job. They keep these buildings up. That's what was going on with the old middle senior high school for a long time, that they were amazed at how much use we got out of these buildings. But they're past their useful life. And what we can build is going to be so much better for our kids and our staff moving forward. Um, just some areas, again, of concern, so people who are watching will know why uh, we need this. Uh, classroom spaces, we really don't have any extra spaces within the building. Um, within the next year, actually, all the elementary classrooms will pretty much be used. There'll be no open classroom spaces. Thankfully, we've got the um, interactive touch panels, which are wonderful. The, uh, we talked at our administrative meeting today at how well they're being used so quickly. Uh, that's the kind of technology we need even more of um, within the buildings. Um, we lack breakout spaces, we lack small group spaces, um, an outdated HVAC, electrical, plumbing, et cetera, all of those. Although in a new school building, they don't build them with air conditioning, they're not central air. Uh, there's certain areas that are, but even in brand new buildings, there's no, there's no central air built in. Um, we lack special education suites and spaces that properly service our kids. We have very limited and all shared spaces for related services such as speech, PT, OT, APE, Title I, and our EL services. Um, we lack space for our specialists. Those spaces have been um, taken over by classroom space, so now they are traveling, which makes it difficult. That's not an easy job to travel to all these classroom spaces. Uh, we lack modern furniture. The PTO has been wonderful about providing some money for flexible furniture. Um, but just in general, I think you look here at the middle senior high school, how much use we've gotten out of the furniture um, that we put in. And just having more adaptable and flexible spaces are, are truly very important. Um, the, the overall age of our buildings, uh, the ages are listed here. Uh, the, you know, the Howard School does look newer because of the reno re more recent renovations, but the bones of all buildings range from 1956 to 1968. So the good news is, I mean, the buildings back then, I think, were built very well. Um, you don't see many buildings that still remain from the 70s. It seems like that era of buildings are non-existent, but the buildings are older. Um, all are experiencing some structural issues and wear and tear issues, which you would expect with the age of the buildings. Um, the spaces, you know, 112,000 square feet um, for the three buildings. They're, they're smaller. We're going to find much bigger spaces uh, in a newer building. And, the, you know, the schools function due to the fact of the hard work of our maintenance and custodial staff. Um, we've talked about this. This is, this is a slide taken from our budget book. Um, but we have seen a consistent rise in the student population. I think as of today, we're at about 1422. So we're continuing to go up above the 1400 student level. Um, there are a number of homes. We've worked hard with the MSBA to capture that information in terms of the growth in town. They've, they've looked at our data. They've, they're gonna really add, I think, a representative number of students to our number, uh, which I think is a good thing. But we've got lots of homes being built um, at least one apartment complex. Uh, there's also uh, the MBTA rail housing, which will be an, an additional 143 units to be determined where and when that will start. But again, we need to plan for that so we don't um, underbuild any building. And again, thank you to the MSBA for helping to work with us. We did get a, an email late today, so we'll have more information to present at the school building committee meeting with an enrollment number. Our current enrollment for the elementary schools, including preschool right now is 783. Um, so we'll talk more about that. Um, at the informational meeting on the 18th, we'll talk about the reimbursement rates. We're at 54.79%. 
um, of a reimbursement. There are ways to add reimbursement points. We'll talk about the enrollment data. Uh, we'll talk about feasibility and schematic design. What does that mean? What do we get for the amount that is hopefully approved at town meeting? And we'll, we'll give a number that we're gonna move forward with. Just for frame of reference, when the feasibility study was done for the middle senior high school quite a few years ago, it was 800,000. So you look at inflation, you look at um, what buildings we're going to be studying, what grade configurations, because we do have to study the Roselle McDonald, because that's a priority school. We know we want to study a, a full, combining all three, which would be pre-K to six, and then we'll need to look at combining two of the schools, um, and we'll study all of those. So a lot goes into it. Uh, it's a pretty comprehensive process. Um, again, very exciting, uh, very, very labor intensive, but we're, we're working through it, and Gary Keith, the chair, and the whole committee is doing a great job. Mr. Bogwell, are those, um, when you're talking about the different options for configuration, are those each a feasibility study in itself, or are those? They'll be, part, they'll be included within the overall feasibility study. So they will look at all options. They'll, okay. look, they'll look at the, the whole the grade configuration. They'll look at a pre-K to three or pre-K to four, because we know Howard School can't remain a three-grade three, three grade building unless we did an addition to it. And they'll look at probably a one to six building, leaving the Spring Street School as an early childhood center. They'll look at the structures of the buildings. They'll look at the bones of the building. They'll look at where these could take place and so forth. So that's why a lot goes into it. It's a lot of time and effort, and therefore there's a, a pretty big price tag for it. And just to clarify, those options that they need to look at with these partially determined by what the state says we need to evaluate. Correct, great. That's the reason for the Roselle McDonald one. Even though we know that that probably not gonna be a preferable option for us to just rebuild the Roselle McDonald because we're not consolidating anything, we still have to study that and get a price. That will be part of it, um, looking at you know where where they could build. I mean, I think we have some ideas, but not knowing that not being our field of expertise, yes, they'll look at where we could do that. Um, town budget meeting. So we've talked as a committee about uh, our desire to continue our collaboration with the town uh, as we move towards or through budget season. Um, so we have scheduled a meeting with myself, uh, our business manager, our budget subcommittee, Mr. Dragonetti and Mr. Schmier, um, our town administrator, and a member of the Board of Selectmen. So in October, we're going to be meeting. Uh, our goal is to collaborate uh, and share rele relevant information about the current budget and looking ahead to FY25. I think there's a lot of things that we can discuss. We, I think, have always been pretty consistent and transparent, so we want to continue that. Uh, but we want to talk about our school choice numbers, how they're lower than we projected. Um, but we weren't going to add students to our classrooms, to overcrowd our classrooms, just to make budget. I don't, I don't that's not right, um, we, but we have other needs. We want to talk about the social and emotional needs of our kids uh, and what staff we feel are necessary to be added. We want to talk about the building project. We want to talk about out-of-district placements and transportation. We want to talk about our continual growth of our EL population um, and the enrollment concerns that we have. Um, and we also want to hear from the town. We want to hear how's town receipts, what, what do town receipts look like? How do some of the building projects in town look? What's going on with the warehouse? Um, things like that. So I think it's a, a good opportunity just to sit and talk and share information. Um, we'd like to meet again um, mid-cycle almost, January, February, and then we'll do our budget pr uh, presentation in March. Our priorities haven't changed, I think, since we've been doing budgets together. We've always been consistent that there are needs that we have, uh, and unfortunately money is attached to those needs. We understand that the town's been very good to us over the past couple of years, um, but we've documented these needs. So we just hope to continue that uh, through these meetings. And then finally, uh, we have our uh, plan of success. So 
Uh, last year, uh, a group of over 30 educators, administrators, parents, school committee members, and students worked together uh, to create a five-year district success plan. We created five strategic objectives, student success, curriculum, staff development, and facilities and resources, which came out of that 28 strategic initiatives. And we, it was actually came from one of our educators said, hey, can we get back together? And they said this last year. I said, sure, let's put a date on the calendar for September. We can go back, uh, look at the plan, look at what, because you can't have 28 priorities. That's, that's not realistic. So what are the priority areas and how are we going to address those um, for the success plan? That's all I have. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. All good stuff, is it? Yes. Um, okay, under business, um, first up is a voting issue for homeschool applications. Mrs. Marble. covers nine of our WB families, by the way. I don't know if I've ever, men ever mentioned that. Um, but there's 24 applications. I've reviewed them all. They do align with our policy. Um, so I do recommend you approve them. Thank you. Donations. Um, looks like we have donations from the PTO, some school supplies. So the PTO carried on the tradition of donating to the kindergartners, the back to school, school supplies. So huge thank you to PTO. It's a huge cost. Um, and kindergartners go through a lot of crayons and markers. And it's great that the parents aren't held to you know replenish or the teachers aren't replenishing. So again, huge thank you to PTO for continuing that really important tra tradition. by the PTO as presented by Mrs. Goulet. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, okay. if I could just, yeah. uh, while we're on donation, I think it might be appropriate just to talk about the air conditioners, oh, sure. um, just to put it all on the same page. So when during the heat wave, we did have a few families mm -hmm. bring in some air conditioners, which again, we, we appreciate. I think one of the strengths of West Bridgewater is the caring of the community and the parents, and they want what's best mm -hmm. for our kids. Um, unfortunately, there's a, there's a little bit of a turnaround time we get things like that. We have the air conditioners ranged in ages. Some, you know, were a little bit older. We'd have to, you know, make sure they're safe to go into the classrooms. Um, and they're not as easy as installing in a regular window. You can't just open the window. Windows have to be taken out. And they have to fit in. They have to build, actually, some um, wood around it to make sure it fits. So those, it couldn't happen, you know, literally overnight, unfortunately. We do have three classrooms at the Rose McDonald that don't have air conditioners. I don't think there's any at the Howard School. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did go over and I looked at the air conditioners. Um, I looked at, you know, how big they were, the age of them. I've talked to the head of maintenance. Um, you know, the turnaround time just couldn't happen um, during that short amount of time. I looked at the, I went to each of the classrooms looked at the spaces they were. I think one of them um, had a portable air conditioner in there after. Uh, you know, in working with Mrs. Goulet, I think we're gonna try to find a way, you know, before the spring to see what we can do to make sure we can get all the classrooms um, some sort of air conditioner in the Roselle McDonald because we're only three short. Um, but I just wanted to bring it up because, you know, again, we thank everyone for doing it and we thank for their understanding. It was hot. I was in the classrooms. They know how hot it was. Um, but hopefully we can at least solve that and hopefully we don't heat like that for a while. Does it seem likely that there's any electrical work that might be needed? To yes. Take advantage of these? Thank you. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that these classrooms too, being the age of the classrooms, they're very limited number of outlets and we'd have to run extension cords and we want to make sure if we were to go adding in all at the, you know, at the Howard, we might have to look at the whole electrical system. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty old. That's part of our capital budget is to redo our whole electrical systems at both schools um, in the near future. You know, obviously the building project would take precedent over that, but in some classrooms, there's only a couple sets of outlets. And they may not be near the windows where they are. So now you're running 
you know, these long extension hoods, which isn't safe either. So again, we want to make sure it was safe. The heat is a concern, but also we you know, want to have a fire or something, anything like that. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, also under business, inclusion matters update. Mr. Right. Shmir. Yeah. Uh, the mission of inclusion matters as West Bridgewater's special education parent advisory council is to build inclusive schools and community. We do this by supporting families of students with IEPs and 504s, and including regular education parents by offering advice, advocacy within the school system, and opportunities for education and community building through regular workshops and events for parents, guardians, and families. We'd like to welcome our newest board, board members, Barry Reeves, Mary Jory, Charlotte Warmill, and Liz Farrell. They join Robin Dragonetti and Jenny Vieira, as well as our non-voting community advisors, Lisa Drennan and Nikki Maloney, and your new co-chairs, Bridget David and myself, David Schmier. We wish a happy retirement and send a big thank you to Melissa Winchell for all her years of service and the hard work she put in to bring Inclusion Matters to where it is today. Just a reminder, we'll be hosting an informational table at each school's curriculum night this fall. Please stop by to meet Inclusion Matters board members, ask questions, learn more about us, and join our mailing list for a chance to win some awesome giveaways. We're also planning our annual webinar to provide parents with information about special education basic rights. We expect to have a date for the event in the very near future. In the words of Jesse Jackson, inclusion is not a matter of political correctness. It is the key to growth. For more information about Inclusion Matters and upcoming events, you can find us on Facebook at Inclusion Matters MA or by visiting our website at www.inclusionmattersma.com. Great, right. thank you very much. Uh, next up is policies to open slash review. Mrs. Dragonetti and Mrs. Milton. Um, can yes, I would thank you. like to make a motion. <laughs> do, should I, do I have to read them all? Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, to open policies AB, the people and their school di district, BB, school committee legal status, <clears throat> BEBD, agenda format, BEDB-E, agenda format, BEDH, public comment at school committee meetings, BEDH-E, guidelines for public comment, EFC, free and reduced cost food services, GCQD, resignation of professional staff members, GCQE retirement of professional staff members, GDQD suspension and dismissal of support staff members, JKA corporal punishment, JKAA physical restraint of students, KCB community involvement in school affairs, and KI visitors to the schools. Second. Uh, discussion? So um, most of these, um, we've, when we were selecting which ones we were going to look at for next month, um, we're anticipating that they may be quick. Um, we did a little preview and some of them have already um, been um, either rescinded um, or, and or are incorporated into other um, policies in the index. More to come. All right. Um, all in favor of opening the policies as presented? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, and then approval of policies. Okay. Another voting we'll issue. Um, so I would like to make a motion um, to adopt the following policies. AA, school district legal status. AD, mission statement, philosophy statement. ADDA, background checks. ADDAR, dash R, sorry. DCJIS model Corey policy. AE, commitment to accomplishment. JIC, student discipline. JICA, student dress code, JICE, student publications, JICF, gang activity slash secret societies, JICFA, prohibition of hazing, and JICFA-E, hazing, as written. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Sure. So, policies AE, JICA, JICE, JICF, JICFA-E um, all had no edits, just added an updated source. So that was great. Um, policies AA, ADDA, ADDA-R, 
J I C F A. Sorry, there's so many acronyms. <laughs> it's just like all these things. Um, I got lost in my head. Um, there's no changes to the content on these. There's just ma minor tweaks to the verbiage, but um, and maybe some pronouns that were updated, but very, very few. All right, so then we're moving into the others. So the ones that did have some changes to the content were um, AD, mission statement, philosophy statement. Um, there were edits made to incorporate the, dis the district plan for success. Um, we had more added emphasis that was on diversity, equity, and inclusion. There was um, clar clarified robust curriculum and um, what effective learning environments for all students should be. There was, some, there was also um, social emotional success that was added um, for academics that was, that was included into that policy as well. And then JIC, student discipline, this one had more. Um, Edits incorporated the changes to the mass regulation from last fall, which states districts will limit removal from class and use alternative efforts such as restorative justice, meditation, conflict resolution, written notification supplied to the superintendent before students in grades K through three are suspended, notice of suspension, suspension to parents in English and primary language of the home will be, will be provided. And then um, written notice of suspension to the student with an opportunity to meet to review prior to serving. Parents and guardians will be provided the same opportunity for that meeting. And then um, there was a change for the word, um, the words, excuse me, expelled and expulsion were removed and changed to excluded and exclusion. So there were some pretty substantial edits to that. Those, all yeah. in line with regulations. Yeah. And thank you to Mr. Bodwell for suggesting that we incorporate the district plan for success because it really did update the mission statement. I think it looks very really nicely good the way yeah. it is now. Um, any other questions for the discussion? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then um, move to hold policy ADF school district wellness program open for further review and discussion at the October meeting. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Sure, so um, we're anticipating that there's going to be some major changes to the content on this one. Um, it's something that we had in place a while ago um, and we're gonna take a look back at, at what we have today and um, consult with, with um, a variety of stakeholders to make sure that we're, we're getting everything that we can in that one. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, as always, thank you both for, um, and Mr. Bodmel for all your work in keeping our policies uh, moving along with the updates. Uh, next up is the Warrant Subcommittee Report. Uh, Ms. Mayakowski. She's going to present for yep. me tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> the following warrants were pay issued and paid for the fiscal year of 2024. So bill of warrants, so on August 3rd, 2023, <clears throat> $130,075.33. August 10th, 2023, no warrant. August 17th, 2023, $141,878.22. August 24th, 2023, no warrant. August 31st, 2023, $204,000. Six hundred and eighty-seven hundred dollars and ninety-four cents, and then we have two payroll warrants, August fourth, two thousand twenty-three, five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred eighty-two hundred dollars and eight cents, and on August eighteenth, two thousand twenty-three, four hundred ninety-six thousand seven hundred dollars and forty-seven cents. As always, always remember warrants of public records and what signed are available in the Selectman mm -hmm. office for review. Great, thank you very much. Um, public comment, members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student or employee confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public comment. Do we have anyone? All right, moving along to the calendar events. Uh, District-wide, there'll be a half day on September 27th. 
district meetings. The next PTO meeting will be taking place on October 4th at seven o'clock at uh, the Roselle McDonald School. There'll be an athletic boosters meeting on October 11th at seven o'clock here in the Learning Commons. I think there's one on Wednesday too as well. Uh, you're right, this Wednesday. Yes, yes. just because I just posted. That's right, there. yep. Um, at the Middle Senior High School on um, September 13th, uh, the, middle, the middle school and the high school have a guest speaker. Um, on September 19th, will be a principal's coffee hour at 8 a.m. On 921, the class ring info night will be held at 5 o'clock in the CAF. On September 22nd, CAF class ring sales will take place during Power Block. And on October 4th, there'll be a Cyber Sense assembly for grades 8 and 9. At the Howard School, as we mentioned, on 914, it will be uh, the curriculum night from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Um, on September 20th, Howard will have their picture day. On September 26th, the Howard School Council will meet at 245. And on October 2nd, uh, the sixth grade will go on a field trip to Patriot's Place. At the Rose L. McDonald School on September 12th will be the Life Touch Fall Pictures. And on the 21st, as we mentioned, curriculum night will take place there at five, from 5 to 7 p.m. Our next regular school committee meeting date will be October 2nd um, at 6 o'clock here in the Learning Commons. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.